Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. Today we're back on the Kawasaki F7 and we've we've already done the uh, the wiring that we need to do. I've got the new uh, sheathing on and I just kind of spiffied that up. These are identical really to the Yamahas and a lot of the Suzuki's so I'm not going to go through this again uh, just uh, if you want to if you want to see any of that rebuilding of those hand handle con or handlebar controls uh, just go back and look at them on the Yamaha or the Suzuki uh, they are the same you got the same sliding uh, pieces in there switches are the same everything's the same so go back and take a look at those but I've got these ready I'll show you them here in a minute and I've I still need to go over some of the uh, uh, cabling and other than that it's going to be assembly and we'll just see where we get uh, you know we're pretty close to being able to see if the thing will run uh, we do need to uh, get the carburetor on get the oil system all purged and uh, get some oil in the bottom end just a lot of little net noise things <clears throat> I don't know that we'll get there today but we're heading that way and it won't be too long so let me uh, get you I, I'm over at the table I'll get you over here and I'll show you uh, what we need to do the cabling what we've already done to the switches and the electrical parts and uh, kind of take you over to the bike and see what we still need to do. Okay, here's our our switch for the uh, left side, and it's all redone. And here's the uh, light for, I believe it's the speedometer, and it's all redone, and the ignition switch itself. Now that had a cover on the bottom of it, and this was it. And it's real crusty and really no good anymore. It would have it would have fit on this right here, and I just couldn't find anything that was close. So I used a dust cap like this and just cut it down and cut a hole in it, slid it over the sleeving, and then slid it up inside. And then just uh, the hole, what was left of the hole, I put some uh, RTV on. So that should keep that waterproof for the most part. And, you know, probably not going to uh, ride it in the weather anyway. But the switch is all done. We had to take the ends off here. And let's see, these I think I was able to keep in, all this stuff. And I just had to, had to pull the connector off on this end same on this one and this one here uh, this leg here was I could leave on this one over here it, it was chafed up here all four wires were cut through to the uh, to the copper so I had to put all new wires in and put new ends on this one and of course uh, put it all back together in the switch itself the uh, I've been, I've spent quite a bit of time over the years trying to collect uh, levers and the uh, perches and all that stuff. And everything I've got is just not very good. So I just decided to buy uh, a set of aftermarket ones. And they're a lot better. They're, they're shiny. You know, they're, they're ready to go. And they've got the mirror purchase if you want them. Now, the um, clutch cable right here, this has got quite a bit of set in it down here, and it's got, it's kind of chafed along here. And the, in, the inner wire is kind of kinked up. Now, I think I went over this before, but this end here, I can't do anything about, and don't need to, because it looks like it's in good shape. Uh, I can't recrimp this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this apart we'll replace the whole inner cable I've got ends uh, 
similar to these, so there's no problem there. And I this end here is all kinked, so I'm going to remake that cable, uh, the top part. So we'll just be reusing the bottom part here. Now on the throttle cable, uh, I think everything on the lower end looks okay. I just need to clean it. And the upper end, it's got a pretty good kink right here. So I think I'm going to take the upper and disassemble it and put a new, a new inner, a new outer, and use the original ends. And the starter cable is actually okay. This is the uh, one for the choke. And the uh, speedometer cable, I was able to find one. I think it's an aftermarket one, but I was able to find one on eBay. So I have that one coming. And of course, uh, I told you the other day that I had a new front brake cable that I bought many years ago that has the switch already in the cable and I had to make a new wire for uh, for that the uh, the wire harness for it so everything is going to come down here oh and the tachometer cable seems to be in good shape so I'm, I'm going to reuse it the only part is uh, right at the top it's kind of uh, shrunk here but it's all straight and it uh, it's it's free so I'm going to try to use it. Uh, I say all this is together. So I think the next thing I'm going to do, I'll go ahead and get this piece off and I'm going to put that in the tumbler and try to, to clean it up. I can go ahead and get the uh, levers and perches on. And I think that will get us going. And then we just need to get the carb on, get it all plumbed, and uh, get the oil tank on, get it plumbed, and uh, exhaust, uh, just stuff like that, and uh, we'll see where we're at. Okay, we'll get these gauges off again, and uh, we'll get the ignition switch hooked up installed since we've got it all dry I think okay the ignition switch bolts right here and this is the rubber that came out of it and it well I noticed that when I was uh, before I took it apart it was real sloppy so we've got to take up some room here are the shoulder bolts that's supposed to use and if you put that rubber on there you can see the shoulder doesn't take up that whole area so I'm cutting a piece another piece of rubber out here I'm, I'm thinking one piece may work but it may take two of them we'll see but I'm uh, I've got this one cut out I've just got to cut the holes Let's see if I can get these cut And there's our other one. Huh, well you know, they pretty well line up. Miracles happen. Okay, let's see how this panned out. Yeah, I think that's going to work good. Still have our insulation there from the, you know, to insulate it. But it's uh, not flopping around. The shoulder bolts should just 
bottom out on the bracket there. Right there. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's nice. There's a couple different ones of those. Another one is more straight up, but that's this the the one I've got with this one. Kind of leans back towards the rider. Let's see how this goes in. You should just go kind of go back down here to the side so we can hook them all up. And those go right back in the little bracket. Okay, yeah, that looks about right. So I'll have to get that all, uh, the gauges tightened back down. So there you can see this one, it just points right back towards the rider. Makes it a little easier to get, I think. The Yamahas uh, and some of these Kawasaki's go straight up and down right here. And that's okay too. That's, this is just the one we've got, so that's what we're going to play with. I was able to find some of these uh, rubber insulators. Of course, they're 50 years old, so they're probably not going to be much better than the ones I got. But I'll see when I get them in. You can see the, the cable or the wiring routing here, how that's going to go. And here's the, the one out of the switch. And then everything just drops down to the side here. And I believe it just all connects up and bundles up inside the tube here. Nice convenient place. This has got a lot of room in here with this wide gusset. Okay, we've got all that connected up and tucked up, I think. All fits in there really nice, really. It's pretty good. Can't remember how much room we have there with the tank, but that, hopefully that will go in there okay. And I've got the tack cable hooked up and the horn hooked up on over here. And then I just, I've got the nuts and washers on here. I just need to tighten those up. So we're just about buttoned up up here. Okay, I think, I, I can't think of any other reason to be in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut my little safety wire here to keep that from falling on the floor. I'm hoping everything's in there. We've got our ground and uh, We've just got three wires other than the signal lights that we're not using. So let's go ahead and get that up there. I think that's it. So there we go. Okay, this first one is the clutch. And as you can see, we've got this, this big uh, set here. And it's kind of coming across, coming apart right here. And it's uh, really been chafed here. So really this top piece and the inner cable is all that we need to replace. And the first thing you want to do, of course, is to find out what size cable you got. So we got two millimeter, I've got plenty of that. And the uh, casing to go with it, this, uh, this measures about six millimeter, a little thereabouts. And that's pretty close. 
and we need to make sure we got the ends because we're going to do the entire inside cable because it's probably yeah see the see the big kink here in the top that's no good so we'll just replace what we can we're keeping this lower piece right here with the adjuster so we've got that piece right there and that's going to fit in the side case it goes right in here like this if you can <laughs> if you can hang on to it well it does so that's that's the correct end for this end and we've got two caps and the other end is a little different but we still get the job done it's a solid about eight millimeter in by what about nine so we've got the two-piece one so we'll put this end on just like we do the other end and it's uh, it's about eight millimeter by about nine millimeter so we should be we should have everything that we need to to repair this cable so let me get uh, get some tools okay time to time to do it here so we'll just go ahead and cut it and I'd like to just cut it up here so I can so I can get a good measurement on everything and uh, we can go ahead and pull our inner from our outer yeah the inner wasn't frayed but it was sure kinked up up here so we're going to replace it so we need let's see where does the piece go there it is we need to measure with our piece to get a good uh, a good measurement here of what we're going to need to put back in it okay i just measured this uh, from the very tip of that end to the very tip of this end with our piece and we're at about 43 and 7 eighths so I'm gonna go 44 that way when we pound down the birdcage on each end we'll lose a little bit so uh, that way we should be right on target okay we've got our two millimeter inner cable And we're going to go to 44. Good enough. And on this uh, outer cable, we can just just measure it end to end right here <clears throat> so you got it just to no it didn't you gotta get it flat with the other end just just right so we're good on that so i'll go ahead and k or uh, grind the ends here to clean those up and we'll mix up some epoxy and put our ends on because i don't have a crimper and then we'll start making our uh putting our ends on the uh, inner cable okay we've got our new inner and our new outer here Everything fits good there.
and I just uh, ground down the ends here to get rid of the burr and took a little tool to deburr the inner part of the cable. Now we'll just mix up a little epoxy and install our caps. Just apply a little of the epoxy right here on the end. It'd be nice to have one of those crimping tools, but I just don't do enough of this to to really warrant having one. And same on the other end. Don't need much anyway, because when you you get it all assembled, it uh, it's not going to go anywhere. You you don't have any place for the bird cage to go, so you've got to drill it. I just finished this one. You just need a recess in there for it to go into. So I'll go ahead and drill this one. Just got to be kind of careful. You just need something that can catch that bird cage. too deep because you you you'll make it weak yeah yeah I'm using uh, Alex's bird caging tool his is much better than mine uh, but it it's really nice he's got the pins and everything in it I'll show you when I get done here. Okay, I need a little bit more on that. I kind of slipped on my hammer there trying to get around the camera. So let me get it back in there. I'm going to move you up out of the way just a little. It did it, but it just didn't do it enough. Yeah, there we go. So that's going to keep us from coming through. that birdcage now sets right down into that hole that I drilled in the top and it's just about flush so that once the solder gets into that it can't pull back out there's just no way it can do it just got the the end on here and there's the birdcage I'm just going to take both of those the end and the birdcage and dip it in some acetone let's clean all the oil off of it let that dry a little bit. And once that's dry, we'll, we'll put some flux on it and heat that up real quick so that uh, it can absorb into it. Let's wait on this to dry a little. People have asked me what I use for uh, flux. That's it. Same stuff you use for sweat and brass on your, or copper on your uh, water lines. Yeah, I didn't want that up there on that. Trying to get it on the, the end there only.
just melting that, letting it absorb into the, the piece. So that should be good. We're just waiting on our solder to melt. Like we're in pretty good shape here. Get some of the contaminated stuff off the top. And we just, we don't want to go too high on the cable. You don't just get the piece in there and you want to hold it for five to 10 seconds. And then dump it in your water. And that's your end. And you may have to uh, trim it up a little bit with a file to get it to fit in everywhere, but that's, that's all you've got to do. Now on the other end, when we put it together, we've got to make sure all our pieces are on before we birdcage it. So let me get started on that. Here's our, the piece that we're keeping along with the adjuster. It's gonna go right here. And then it goes onto our new outer. And now this is the the end that uh, goes down into the case. So we'll just start that back up through here. So the engine end is done. There's a little burr there yet, so I had to take my awl and just kind of push it in there. So everything's good there now. So we've got all our, all our cable assembled except for this end, but we want to make sure those ends are on. This piece here, it's going to go on first with the large end out. And then this piece is going to go on. And it's going to fit together like that. And that's your your clutch lever in. All that stuff needs to be on before we birdcage this, this in. So let me get set up to do that. All right, we got that in the appropriate receptacle there. And we just give it a little tap. And then there's our birdcage on this end. And that will fit into there and then that will fit into there so let me get ready to solder this end on need these two that end and the cable to clean it up so we'll let that dry And then we'll flux this in and up inside the, the little hole there. And when we heat that up, some of that flux will run up underneath the end there so that uh, it'll fasten itself there also. That's all it takes. Now, just before we do this, what I do is I put this in the vise gently and then pull that cable up into this piece as far as I can pull it. Okay. All right. And again, we're just going to stick it in here for just a few seconds. And then dunk it in the water and cool her off. And there's your end. So this cable is done. It's the clutch cable. Okay, we can go ahead and install this into the uh, case end here. It just pushes in and then this piece 
you've got the hole for the cable to slide into and then you just pull it up and then you take this little this little piece right here and push that down take your pair of pliers and push on it and that keeps it from coming out so that's it's securely fastened in there I'm not sure you can see how that works it just kind of goes behind it so it can't come out and once you get this all tightened up and into your lever on this end everything it, it can't go anywhere anyway so the other one is pretty much the same uh, the throttle cable I'm just going to redo the top part of one uh, the top part and I think that's all I need to do I think I want to go ahead and get the chain on and that way we we're done and we can put the cover on I'm hoping this is enough chain here for this one I've got that bigger sprocket on the front by one tooth we had 110 lengths here I'm not sure what it's supposed to have Looks like I did okay. Looks like I gotta take two lengths out. So I'll pop it right here and I'm, I'm all the way forward on my adjuster. Just go ahead and get that on there so I don't lose it. link out and finish the job all right okay we've got this button back up and this is in exactly the same spot it was the pipe will go here as you know and we've got the chain pretty well adjusted up and it's most of the way back here so we've got plenty to uh, to use up and I went up here to the clutch and we've got a little free play this was a little bit different here I had to open this uh, up just a little bit to get that different type of uh, fitting in there but it, it all works fine you just had to open it up a little bit had to, done it, had to do that on other bikes before and I think we're all set up here this looks like it's right uh, we got front brake and I think we've got enough room here to get all this stuff uh, in with the tank the way it is There's a lot of stuff here, but I, you know, it's made to do that, I think. So if it doesn't fit, then we'll have to adjust it. But I think we're to the point where we need to kind of start over here. Uh, the brake light switch, it was completely froze up and it works some of the time. And I've got a new one from Amazon here. I, I guess we'll try to hook that up. I don't want to try to find a, a real one and pay that kind of money. So we're just going to 
we're going to do that. We're going to get into our carburetor and oil tank and that sort of stuff. Yeah, we're, I'm just hooking up the stoplight switch here. It was completely froze up and you know it works but you can't rely on it. <laughs> Makes liar out of me now. Oh, there we go. Yeah, you just can't count on it every time. Let me see if this other one is going to fit. This one, pretty much all the same stuff here. Let's. Okay, we got that one on. I like that. I've still got to put a new filter in that bolt. Okay, this uh, screen is all gone here. So I'm going to try to pull that out of there. That's my hope. If I give it a little, little heat. What's left of it. So I've got some here like I used to make the uh, fuel filter I think. What, what was that on? I can't remember what it was on. I, I think it might have been the uh, Yamaha flat tracker. So I'm just going to cut a piece and kind of form it and then put it down in there and see if we can get it soldered back in. All right, just kind of roll this up. See if I'm, I need to be a little bit smaller yet. Okay, I think we've about got her. And I'm just gonna cut it off here at the top. And we'll just kinda fold over the very top part and smash it. Just plenty of oil should go around that then. So what we need to do is go ahead and get some solder back in there. And I'm gonna kinda do about the same thing as I did with uh, the cables. Just put a little flux on it 
and we'll heat it up real quick and that should soak down in. Yep. So I'm not going to put that much heat on it to, to put it in because you saw it started to glow there on the screen so we don't want that. So let me see if my little one here will, I'm probably going to have to put some juice in it. Yeah, I bet so. Let me charge it. All right, let's see if this will go now. Okay, I think we're good. there. Okay, we're trying to get our carburetor put together and if I remember right it's easier to get all this stuff in there before you do the carburetor. Let's see, I think I'm, I need a lid first. It's up there. This is a pretty complicated piece of equipment here. In my opinion. I think it's a lot more complicated than it needs to be. But maybe it isn't. <coughs> okay, looks like we get our needle in there, our cable in. We've got the spring lo loaded here. And we should be able to get this little stopper down there. I think. I think just like that. And then that part's in. Then you turn this over and get your idle pin in. And it's, it's going to come up through here. There it is. And I believe there's a little cotter key or something. Okay guys, there you have it. We've made quite a bit of headway here, but there is just so many little things you have to do. And uh, we're just not gonna be able to get them all into this one. I, I was hoping to get most of everything done in this video so that we could maybe do a fire up. Uh, in the next one but there's just a lot going on yet uh, 
as you can see, you know, have to make filters or screens for the oil uh, oil tank. I've still got to do something like that for the fuel tank also. Uh, there's just a lot of little little jobs yet to do. So don't get frustrated with me. I'm just trying to get it all done, but I want to get it done right too. So I think when we get together the next time, we'll. Uh, We'll probably get the carburetor on and the exhaust and you know try to get uh, the adjustments kind of sorted out and we may get it fired up but uh, it's it's at least three or well two more videos away from a ride I think but we'll we'll see what we can come up with uh, if you would at this time Go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and if you have thank you very much uh, hit that uh, thumbs up and uh, if you want the the notifications that's cool too uh, but anyhow hey thanks for going along on the ride see you next video